year blunt talk with lt episode 153 make sure you hit that like button upon entry make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed hit that notification bell to be up on all the uploads um merry christmas y'all merry christmas but um nothing ruins a good story better than the truth so we're gonna throw in some facts to all the stories that you all know and love and discuss gossip about youtube channels are making multiple videos about this and i'm leaving here with something <laughs> bad sources you know I mean? let me show y'all what the source is for this aisha curry and steph curry news oh! all right um let me pull it up <laughs> let me pull this shit up all right msn and multiple large uh, mainstream corporations verified accounts reporting this news. Aisha and Steph Curry have an open marriage with side hookups, says report. Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. Y'all want to know where this report comes from? <laughs> however, I, I just skipped the first part of this, this article. It just says, however, an anonymous report on the hot rumor page Des Moines looks to state otherwise. An anonymous source, anonymous report from a hot rumor website. Come on, man. A rumor website. It is known for rumors, and you get an anonymous report. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, bitch. All right, let me give it a chance. Let me see what insight this anonymous report uh, provides. All right, here's the anonymous report. Look at the message. Have it on very good authority that this well-known NBA couple aren't as faithful and in love as their social media and image make them out to be. They both have side hookups and flings, but keep it very private to keep up with the perfect image they show to the world. I was shocked to learn they've been together for so long. What? Silence, you fool. An anonymous, an anonymous source with this report. Nigga, anybody could have said this shit. Ah. It could have been me. Ah. It could have been you. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Really, nigga? This is what we're doing? This is the news? And why do people believe this so much? Or so fast, or so easily, without actually looking into the report, looking into the report. Multiple YouTubers are making long ass videos about this. They're having discussions, hour long live stream discussions about this. Why do they believe it so simply? If this was LeBron James and Savannah James, would they be buying this? Or would they be like, ah, uh, provide cow. some more insights, provide some more proof, some more evidence that this is happening. Let me see one of these side pieces. Uh, let me get some DMs uh, exposed. Where are the receipts? People would be asking for some shit, but because it's Aisha Curry and Steph Curry, they believe it. They're putting Aisha Curry and Steph Curry in the Will Smith and Jada category already. Ah. Why is that? Because someone like LeBron James and Savannah James have a pristine public image. Savannah James has never said anything out of, pop out of pocket publicly, gone out of her way to do any interviews or solicit any outer attention. To this day, she doesn't have her own YouTube show or anything. She doesn't go out there or she doesn't say outlandish shit. To this day, Aisha Curry has said a bunch of outlandish shit. To this day, from soliciting more attention from men that is not her husband, or the, for the or showing the desire to get a att male attention, from her shaming women for showing so much of their skin, and then when she lost weight and got her body right, she started showing that very same skin. Ah. From like saying woman. things like the finals were rigged when Steph lost. A bunch of things that she said that did not represent their relationship in the right way. And when you do things like that, a mild rumor from an anonymous nobody, a mere no-name brand, <laughs> and everybody believes it. Because you're not representing the relationship right. You're not really holding it down in the media. It's a very difficult task for women to do yeah. for when they when they have an extremely talented or a high value husband, a public figure like that, to understand the dynamic of how they have to act. They can't just do what they want. They're representing the family first before they're, fa they're representing themselves. And, you know, that's why they have to. But they're not even they're not combating it because they see it. And they're like, eh, mere bullshit. We don't or tell, right, <laughs> they could have lucked care. up or the, the, the anonymous report could have just lucked up and outed something that's true with no actual evidence, but it's actually true. What are the chances of that? I don't I'm not I'm not buying that. 
I need some evidence before I stamp things true. I'm not going to just believe things off of belief. Even if it may be true, I still need the evidence. Um, yeah. So shout out to Steph Curry and Aisha Curry. Maybe they, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, 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 Steph has done nothing wrong in the public, in, in the media. In, in interviews, he's represented the relationship perfectly well. There's no reason to think that he would have all these girls on the side. Giggity, 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 goo. Stick around. All right, let's get into the next topic. Um, Meg the Stallion. We must discuss this. We must, as the people, as the social media commentators, as the podcasters who spoke on this at first, for, for, for me, myself included, when I said, if this is true and Tory Lanez did shoot her, but I always had to preface if. I didn't snap nothing. I'm like, we got to wait through the case and see the facts. But if this is true, he's a bitch ass nigga for shooting the girl for whatever reasons that they laid out initially. Now that the story is very confusing, very convoluted all over the place. Um, uh, it's not it's not even just convoluted at this point. It's contradictory. The statements that are left from when it was initially ha from the initial statements to now. Straight up contradictory statements from Meg's uh, defense team. When we get the, like, listen, all right, I don't want to speak on anything. I don't want to contrive anything. We're just speaking on the facts of what's actually going on and what's been said at that the last court hearing. These are the facts of the case. Three out of the four people that were the witnesses said that Tori did not shoot Meg. Meg is the only witness that said it. Meg initially said that her back was turned, and then another story came out that she said she's seen him. What? Are we going to be holding Meg accountable if, in fact, she was lying about being shot in the foot by Tory Lanez? Because the forensics, the... The evidence that the police are providing are showing that the gunpowder, there was no gunpowder found on Tory Lanes, and there was gun, there was a uh, residue closer to Kelsey in her seat. Kelsey was Megan the Stallion's friend. So the lawyer's angle is pretty much more implicating Kelsey. It doesn't seem like Kelsey's going to get charged either way, but. It doesn't seem, with all the evidence that we have right now, it doesn't seem like Tory Lanez has shot Meg Thee Stallion. What? It doesn't seem like that. I don't want to stamp anything out down because there, there might be new evidence that comes around the corner. But with everything that's put forth to the table, there is no real evidence of him shooting her. So where's all that energy going to be if this bitch just lied? Jesus Christ. Shit getting out of hand now. So where, where where's the where's the outrage and where, what is okay? How outraged are people gonna be if Tory is found innocent? Are people gonna try to cancel Meg? Yay! Are they gonna try to hold her accountable? Is she gonna be serving any jail time? Clearly not. Clearly no jail time. Clearly there will be no uh ramifications for her. In the justice system. Ain't nobody got time for that. I just want that same energy because they tried. They came at Tory with all the canceling energy. To this day, made it very difficult for him to uh, even maintain or make money. To this day, he was getting removed from Spotify playlist for a second. He got reinstated, but at first it was very rough for Tory. And Meg was getting all that media push, that label push. With no real facts of the case because what? At the end of the, or no real evidence against him. Because at the end of the day, she said that she didn't. At, when, it, when it first happened, when it first happened, she denied that she was shot by him because she said she wanted to protect him. Stop the cap. And then she was the one that went to the cops after and said, yeah, he shot me <laughs> after initially trying to say they try to defend him. So what changed from that point? It's a whole mess. She better hope they don't try to put charges on her for perjury if she gets up on that stand and starts capping. Stop it. Get some help. Um, let's get into the next topic. All right, so this is going viral. Rick Ross was on the 85 South show, 
and he just took off apparently he was going to the restroom he said let me go to the restroom and he took off let's get into this video the restroom one time and i'm gonna take this jacket off he's right here he's right door. yeah you can't man you can't, you stay can't take, tuned you can't take you can't take your foot off for, for now <laughs> oh okay. oh i'm talking about for life like he, he in the van what happened ryan he's in the van Oh, he already pulled off. Bruh, why the hell just ain't say that? Oh, no. Hey, good. <laughs> yo, I seen this and I was baffled. I'm like, this nigga just dipped. He just said, yo, let me go to the restroom and I'll take this jacket off. And cut never came back we have been hoodwinked bamboo. that's hilarious when i looked at the comment section and what people are saying on social media a lot of people are like this is me they're talking about social anxiety and when they're ready to leave they just go they don't even say bye sometimes and a lot of people were relating to that and i was baffled i'm like that's how people are moving damn son that's funny but um i don't know if that's what the case was for him maybe he was just too high and he ah. forgot i don't fucking know who knows? That's just hilarious. They didn't they're not tripping over it. They're not taking it personally, but that's funny. The man just picked up and walked out after using the washroom. Forgot he was in the middle of an interview. Um what else do we got here? Let's get into this next topic. All right, this video is going viral because a woman surprised her man for his birthday and this Go. <laughs> Go. You hear someone trying to lessen the blow. <laughs> They're trying to lessen the blow. That was so cool. What? Nah, man. What the fuck? That's a box of candy with some butterflies. Like, what? Am I a child? Yeah. What kind of minimal effort, bare minimum bullshit is that? Don't give me nothing. Give me a card and a high five over that shit, my nigga. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yes. Woman. That's what you wanted to give me. Nothing. Yay! You wanted to give good effort. <laughs> the thought that counts type ass. Like, fuck out of here. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> yo, that broad's getting roasted online, but yo. I wonder what he would have got her for her birthday. Maybe that was a revenge gift. Maybe that was a prank. I don't know. It's going viral, but who knows if that was a prank or that was actual reality because that if that was her giving her best effort, then grant him a few side chicks because you ain't it. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this video is going viral because this was a few months ago, Tristan Thompson and Khloe Kardashian speaking about their relationship prior to uh, the side chick and the baby, the new baby on the way getting exposed. So, Or not even on the way. I think she gave birth. I don't fucking know. Uh, let's, let's get into this video. We've done this rodeo before where your actions didn't go with your words. And for almost a year now, you've been a different person. It frustrates me because I'm like, why now? Why are yeah. you like the man I dreamed of currently? Why couldn't you be that when we were together? Like one of my fears is you're acting like this until you get what you want. And then if you do, you're going to turn into like the old Tristan again. No, it's been almost a year like. I don't think anybody like should waste their time if they're not going to be serious, especially like what, what I put you through. Like I've grown to a point where I know what I want in my life and I know I want you in my life. So obviously we're always going to be each other's life in terms of just because we got true. But I mean, I want more than that. All right. Spoken like a true Brampton finesser. Um, he didn't actually say he just wants her and only her. He said he wants her in his life. He didn't say only you. What? Nah, I'm just fucking around. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the whole context, of the, the whole background to that conversation. So I'm not going to comment on that, really. It's supposed to be the facts who stole Christmas, not the conjecture and bullshit. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, What else do we got here? All right. So I'm kind of late on this. Let's get to this before I get to the toxic relationship reaction I got to get to. Um. Big Sean responding to some of the things that Kanye West said in his interview. Um, the money had been paid to good music. So let me ask you before we finish. No, let me ask you, bro. Yeah. If somebody owed you $500,000, how would you feel? Yeah, yeah. No, listen, okay. how would you feel? 
I would feel fucked. And they was up 100 million. How would yeah. you feel? Yeah, crazy. How, what about if they owed you a million? Yeah. What if they owed you three million? Right. Okay, what if they owed you five million dollars? Right. What if they owed you six? Yikes. And, and, no, listen, listen. Okay. What if they owed you that, bro? Right. I understand. And you showed up for them and you did all these things, right? Right. And they up billions. Right. And then the nigga who comes at them, who talks the most shit, mm. he be bigging up in the interview and shit. When, what are we talking about? We got this is drink champs talking yeah. about Drake. Okay, okay. Who he, you know, loves. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, bro, when you want to talk about loyal to a fault, right? That's what we was talking when, about. When earlier. you talk about that song, mm -hmm. or not, not just that song, just the mentality. Right. Like, yeah, I've been loyal because I'm. The, I feel like I'm the only one who stayed that long for good music. So yeah, it 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 was a personal. It affected me personally, bro. All right, just keep in mind what Kanye said about Big Sean. He said the worst thing he's ever done was sign Big Sean, and uh, he said something about his tombstone. He says it should read, uh, he deserves to be here because he signed Big Sean. Jesus he takes Christ. credit for making Big Sean who he is and saving his life, essentially, saying that if he didn't sign with Kanye West, he would have never made it out the mud taking all the credit for him while just shitting on him, expecting him to be loyal to the point of delusion. There's something called loyalty and riding for those who rode for you and uh, put you on and put you in position. Pause. Big pause. Um, but if you are a diagnosed bipolar, you were on your first campaign trail crying about your wife uh, potentially aborting your daughter and having all sorts of weird meltdowns. And you expect me to vote for you for the president of the free world with my vote because you're my nigga like that. But I don't think that you have the potential to actually do the job properly. Like maybe if I want the, the world to crash and burn, I'm like, yeah, let me get that Kanye West vote a go. But perfect. if that's not my prerogative, why am I doing that? Just because I'm loyal to somebody that owes me $6 million and shits on my name because I don't, you know be completely delusional that's ridiculous all right let me get to the next half of this i'm going in too long pause i can talk about it another time but what? it all goes back to the song blessings everything goes back yeah. to like something to do with drake <laughs> i mean not to be funny but it's just like the obsession so let's just be clear did you think that he didn't want you to have drake on that record or did he want to be on that record? it was me and drake uh-huh it was me and drake my album was due, immediately due that day. Uh -huh. I played him, I had been playing him the music, played him the final album. He said he heard blessings and said, I have to be on here. Mm. And I was like, bro, I already got you on two songs on my album. He hopped on two other songs already mm. on Dark Sky Paradise. He was on One Man Could Change the World. Mm. And he was on All Your Fault. Mm. So that would have been three songs he's on on the album. He's like, I need to be on this record. Uh. I was like, bro, my, my, my pre-order goes up tomorrow. He's like, we about to do it right now. And I helped him write his verse for the song. For blessings. For blessings. Okay. So I hit up Drake. Drake was the one who came up with the idea of the song. Uh -huh. Drake had a concept, like, you know, a little scratch of the hook. We got in the studio and finished it together. So when I when I talked to Drake about it. Drake didn't want Kanye on it. I wouldn't say he didn't want him on it. I said his song is already done, you know. He was just kind of on some like, it don't really need, it don't really need all that. It's already long. It was three verses already. Mm. And he was like, I mean, you want, we don't really need him on it. But what I said was, and by the way, I helped Kanye write his verse. Mm -hmm. I said, bro, bro, got to be on it, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. he said he, he had to be on it. He got to be on it. So, and I feel like that kind of, I don't know if that had any effect on me and Drake relationship. But like I said, Drake wasn't like, don't put him on his shit. Right. But, but eventually I got the did. vibes. You know what right. I'm saying? Right, so, you so anyway. I write the verse with Ye. Mm. I tell everybody in the studio, send it to mastering. His engineer, another person who was in the room, another person who was the CEO of Good, send it to the, I'm like, my shit comes out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, for sure. Next day, I hit a mastering. I'm not an A&R, by the way, and I'm calling mastering. Oops. You get the verse? No, we didn't get any verse. My A&R, like, oh, your pre-order is up. And it's going crazy. And what verse you didn't get? You didn't get Yay verse. I didn't get Yay verse. All right, so that potentially fucked up the release of his album, just trying to get Yay on it. That's that's an act of loyalty. 
because you didn't have to do that. That song was big enough already, him and Drake, uh, Big Sean and Drake. Yeah, I said what I had to say, man. That second reaction, that second video wasn't even necessary because I said what I had to say. Kanye is out of line when it comes to Big Sean. Big Sean seems like he's more in the right than Kanye. Kanye is just all over the place. He's potentially, he's someone that seems like he's very hard to deal with all over the place. All right, so this, 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 I, I don't recommend this at all. What was this girl thinking? All right, so this, this woman thought it was a good idea to hide her pregnancy test underneath her man's waffles to let him know that he's going to be a father and they're having a child. But, um... Let's get into the video. Yeah, no, I know it's pissing, bro. It's That's not, how y'all get tested. That's but how y'all test the uh, but pregnancy. But it's not, it's not that kind, though. Like, why? Like, you just ruined the whole... You thing. ruined my food. Baby. There ain't no baby shit. All right, the, the video's much longer. He's actually trying to cut into his waffles for a period of time unsuccessfully. And he's like, what the fuck's underneath this shit? And then he sees that it's the pregnancy test and it's like you just ruined my whole food you gotta pee on that let me play that video again i think she denied having to pee on that hold on yeah, no, i know it's pissed but bro it's that's not, how y'all get tested but it's not that kind though like why like you just ruined the whole you ruined my food yeah all right baby all right ain't no baby shit. all right so she said it's not the pee kind so i don't know what type of uh pregnancy test that is but in my first mind i think pregnancy test i think you pissed on it i see that in my waffles i'm like what the fuck that's what i'm thinking personally that's what his reaction says but any normal human being would think that way it's like why is there a piss pregnancy test pissy pregnancy test in my goddamn waffles ain't nobody got time for that in my waffles <laughs> yeah i'd be bent um what else do we got here all right so this guy comes home to his woman in the room with another man. She belongs to the street. And his child's also in the bed. What? In the room with them. This video gets messy. I hope I'm not going to have to edit anything and censor this. You that nigga around my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep the door in, y'all. I just called the little nigga. Dariana. <laughs> Dariana, to call your little baby. Dick. <laughs> Come on, man. I know your every move. No, no. You around my yeah. baby. I'm not salty. Don't be, uh, I'm not salty. Don't record. I'm, I, don't record. I'm checking you. I don't care. Come on, leave there. Why you scared? Oh, man, you, you play. You, 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 you got a nigga around my baby. <laughs> All right, so the other guy is in the room. You know he's feeling awkward just standing there like, shit, what is this girl? What type of situation did this woman put me in? Um, In my personal opinion, she did that purposely to get caught. You knew that the schedule of your man. You knew that he was coming home at a certain time. He was going to catch you in the room. You had the child in the room for some sort of protection. So if anything happened, it's not happening in front of the child. No one's getting harmed. Or you would think that because some people, they don't give a shit. But, um, yeah, that guy, that woman put that side dude in harm's way because that could have went very left. That guy could have potentially got shot, stabbed. Anything could have happened to him in those type of situations. Um, the boyfriend coming home, catching his girl cheating, that could have happened to him if that side dude wasn't having that. He's like, okay, this woman put me in a situation like that. He could have, he could have just, you know, slapped out the entire household, everybody gone, because he wasn't having that. It could have went that way also. But we're seeing, from what we've seen, it seemed like there was a mild scuffle or a bit of pushing between him and his uh, cheating baby mother. But um. All around mess. Ah. I don't recommend that. Don't be bringing people into the house that you live in with your, you know, significant other and your child to get like, that's not a situation that anybody should be. And you don't know how left that situation could go. Don't ever recommend some stuff like that. Um, For each party. For the woman, I don't recommend you doing some stupid shit like that. The the side nigga, you got to know if that girl has a dude and he's potentially coming home and you're going to get into some fuck shit. You got to be aware to that type of shit. I don't recommend that for him. And for the man that's being cheated on, like she did this maliciously. You, I, I can't say you knew this was coming, but some somewhere around the line you fucked up and she wanted to 
throw it back in your face somehow, and that is something you have to avoid at all costs because you don't want those type of messages. You could have lost your life. Your child could have lost their life. She could have lost her life. You all could have lost your lives. That could have went so left. And I don't even know what happened after that video. So it could have very well ended, like, on some bullshit. <laughs> Elon Musk says, for those wondering, I will pay over $11 billion in taxes this year. Jesus. $11 billion in taxes. <laughs> How much did you earn throughout this year? How come he didn't do the tax no jitsu all the other rich folks did? What did he do? Did he sell too much Tesla stocks on the open market where it's visible and you could see that you got to pay taxes on those? <laughs> what happened? I don't know, but that is crazy. $11 billion in taxes. He's parting ways with that. He's parting ways with the bread. Um, Jeez. That will be burned up by the government in like two hours. <laughs> the way the government's burning through money. Kevin Durant goes in on a kid for a move that he said. He says, okay, this is what he says. Kevin Durant says, this shit stinks. That shit stinks. This is Kevin Durant talking about a child's move. A child that was on which page? It was a basketball page that posted this kid playing, was it AAU or high school basketball? Um, Overtime posted this and said, I don't care. This move is tough. Overtime basketball page on Twitter posted this clip. Let's get into this clip. It's a travel, mama. Oh. oh. It's a travel. He missed the shot, too. All right, let's, let's, let's watch that move again. This looks like a clear travel. It's a travel, mama. Yeah, that, that shit stinks. Oh. Yeah, what the fuck was that, it's man? Nah, that ain't it. Yeah, I'm with KD here. Ah. KD says that shit stinks. And someone said, I'd be destroyed if KD said this, uh, said this about a move I did. Someone said, real hater shit. Um, someone else said, Kevin Durant hates children. A lot of people going in on Kevin Durant for this, but a lot of people also supporting Kevin Durant. All the NBA players cooking this kid laugh my ass off. So there's other players cooking this kid, uh, apparently. I wish I could be as much of a hater as KD as this shit is hysterical. So people are calling KD a hater because basketball culture generally does kind of pat everyone on the back and um, doesn't really criticize that harshly. Like the basketball community coming up through AAU ball and high school basketball. Anyone that has some sort of talent kind of gets coddled and gets their ass kissed all the way up and talent gets cultivated without any real harsh criticism. And that's the problem nowadays. That's why Ben Simmons being a bitch. Um, but, um, yeah, Kevin Durant complains about the media's criticism and the way people be talking and saying whatever they want, but he says whatever he wants. I guess that's his uh, retaliatory form of dealing with the bullshit. I'm going to say whatever I want about anybody else. Kevin Durant also said that he's not a role model, so we shouldn't expect him to be. Um... Yeah, we're we going to wrap this one up. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We off. Yeah.